Well, the story's about to be written for game four here in picks and bands. They've been relatively the same across the board, if not exactly the same. And now with White back on the purple side, we'll see what yeah. TSM can grab right off the bat. Same start so far. Zillion has been banned in every game by Team Solo Med, and Oyan has been banned in every game by Samson White. Now, last time we had TSM on the blue side, they got Zillion, Rumble banned, and they banned Thresh away from Mata, even though. Uh, obviously, because he would take it in their first rotation for Samson White here. They don't want to first pick Thresh, unless they want to get it for Mata here, but there's going to be other options for first pick. The first pick will be really curious whether they'll decide to go It for is open now. Wow, TSM is the one who bans Rise, which tells me, yeah, they might be, they might be targeting or Thresh. Lee Sin or Thresh, exactly. One of those two should be the first pick, unless they want to go Maokai again. It didn't work for for Dyrus in game two, where we had the Singe pick coming in from Looper against him, he couldn't really do anything. Wow. But that wasn't too much about the pick. The Ben Malkai. All right, so they're basically telling Team Solomit now, decide if, right, one, if, one of two. Yes, if you want Lee Sin or if you want Thresh, decide right now, you have 30 seconds. You do have a minute, I'm lying. Amazing felt pretty good with Jarvan last game. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Thresh here. And this opens up Samsung White to kind of do whatever they want here. They should take Lee Sin now. They have to get Lee Sin for Dandy. It's his main jungle pick. It's Amazing's main jungle pick. Not taking this in right here would be a big mistake in my opinion. Yeah. The crowd knows it as well. On the side of White and a blind pick. Yasuo coming in for Pawn. He's no stranger to the blind pick. And this is a combo we have seen a lot where people will early pick Lee Sin and then they can take a blind Yasuo because combined you have one of the strongest 2v2 setups right. in the game. Fights around the mid lane, late game fights in a split push where Lee Sin joins in with the Yasuo, sets up his ulti with the kick, are so strong. Many of the pro players often say you can't blind pick Yasuo unless you already have Lee Sin. Yeah, because he has Sonic Wave and stuff so he can show where blind stuff is. Anyway, we have amazing odds <laughs> picking Jarvan again. And I really wonder if we're going to see something like a talent from Bjergsen, something that can also go super all in. But obviously, Kazakh is available. Like, it's a good pick for him, and I yeah. think it's a much safer thing. In all the games, it's been picked away from him to push him on Jarvan. It's a exactly. very comfortable chance for TSM here. And also, we get Lucian once again for Wild Turtle. He wants these, like, mid-game AD carries, and it's been paying off because he's been doing a good job early game. Once he gets the lead, Samson White is going to lane swap. I'm just calling it right now. With Braum, they... Whenever they play Braum Twitch, they lane swap every single time, and Mata, he roams a lot. Teams actually in Korea ban it against him often just because they're afraid of his roam early game in the lane swap. Now, is that something that TSM wants to match, or they stay bottom, keep dragging? Go bottom lane, have your dragon control, right. fast push the lane again, get the CS lead for Wild Turtle. This time around, though, don't fall too far behind in the jungle, in the mid lane, in the top lane. That's all that matters for them. It's obviously going to be harder than just... Uh, yeah. The big thing is, is Lee Sin is such an early game insurance policy. Yeah. He's almost always going to bring enough pressure into the game to make it so Samsung White shouldn't fall hideously far behind in the laning phase, especially if Dyrus is starting to pick something like Mundo. We get into some murky water here. Oh, you don't really want to play Mundo against the Yasuo. You want Mundo against double AP comms. We already have three physical damage dealers on the side here of Samsung White. That can be very, very risky. The reason Mundo is not so strong against physical damage comms is because they have sustained damage, so he doesn't have time to regain his HP, and he cannot early build a Spirit Visage normally because he needs the armor as fast as possible. Quite a brutal composition now from Samsung White. We actually see Looper bringing out the Kale. Does have a few plays on that, but looks like he's going to take things into his own hands this game. And we are looking at comfort picks for Samsung White now all around. This is a very standard Samsung White comp. Yasuo is one of the best mid laners they have. Twitch, of course, for him, and you have the Lee Sin the champion Dandy's known for himself. Like, they have completely switched off the pick and ban phase here. There is no risky picks anymore. This yeah. is come for picks all around. The only risk with Samsung White's composition here is it has a lot of execution complexity. We've seen right. Twitch Kale compositions have trouble finding the right type of team fights, uh, specifically the White Shield versus Cloud9 game yeah. that ended up tying that group at the top. However, they bring a lot of initiation with the Lee Sin and the Braum, so Samsung White should be okay, but just timing the Kale ult with the Twitch open takes a lot of practice, and you have to be completely on point so it doesn't go terribly wrong. Exactly. Once you make one mistake with the engage, ulti is gone from Twitch, ulti is gone from Kale, and the other team will just disengage on you instantly. Bjergsen can pop a target very easily on Ari. 
Well, we'll see if Team Solomay can keep the mentality flowing. Samsung White obviously is going to come out firing in this game. We're going to be jumping into game four now as this best of five is still underway. So head over to Twitter, lock in the team you think will come out on top. Send that hashtag TSM win or SSW win to at LOL Esports. We'll be checking out those votes later, calculating them through the game. It's been a TSM driven vote as well as a TSM driven crowd here, gentlemen. Yeah, crazy that was such a shocking thing. Turf for the Korean teams. And I wonder if that gets into the head of Samsung White or even Dandy a little bit when he's on home turf and it's the enemy team yeah. who is getting cheered for. Well, he was talking about how they don't have a lot of fan fans actually, Samsung White. Right. So he was expecting They're it. Criticize if they win, criticize yeah. if they lose. <laughs> it is not always easy being Samsung White. See if TSM does what Loco Doco was alluding to. Do they have early game strategies? And we'll see Samsung White kind of uh -oh. finding out amazing here. That's the wrong way. What to will go. it be for Mato? Wait a minute. Winter's Bite goes out, forces the flash already for amazing, troublesome early game already. Things did not start well for TSM in this game. Immediately having amazing burn his flash makes him so attackable by Dandy on Lee Sin. If Dandy finds him anywhere in the jungle between the levels of two and five, he can basically kill him. Yeah, and the Yasuo pick in mid lane will be able to push the lane early. Yasuo is one of the best champions pre-level six because he's so strong dashing around, which means he's gonna have the pressure in mid lane, opening up for Dandy to invade, knowing Yasuo is gonna be there to help me in case we get in a 2v2 fight. You know what, though? When what? Amazing burned his flash, Dyrus snuck in the other entrance and placed a ward on the red buff of Both Samson buffs White. Awarded, yeah. So that's actually a completely unscouted ward. White definitely thinks they blocked that. I wonder if TSM can pull some creative moves knowing they have that, that vision. But look at the wards also from Samson White here. You have two very defensive wards to try and spot the dual lane from TSM and where they're going sure. so they can move around them, dodge them. That's why you have the ward down between your tier two and tier, uh, inhibitor turret and all the way up in the top lane, in the lane to see if the AD carry is standing ready to group up the minions so they know there's no dual lane in this top side here. A ward for Pawn playing off a little bit. Nolan Bjergsen was not ready for him to come flying out there. Early damage won't mean much if he can stave off the rest of it as TSM will not get three buff this time. Well, they will if things go awry, but right now they're looking good, looking to not fall back other than that flash there in the early game. Some great wards to start them off. They know that the top side, nobody else was there and that they are losing their blue as well and as it should be. Yeah, definitely a better start for GSM in game four than it was in game one. So it does look like they'll be able to survive at least the very, very start of this game. The lane swap is, again, Samsung White initiating it. They're the ones after the top lane. We'll have to see if TSM can try and pull an early dragon off of this, or if White is able to stop it like they did in the earlier games. Yeah, Team Solo mid can't really fall too far behind with their comp because they have Lucian, have Ari. There's a lot about the mid-game power you have, where Twitch is such a strong carry in the late game. Yasuo is one of the best team fighting mid laners in the late game as well. So Team Solome cannot afford falling too far behind. So they have to execute this lane for pop properly. Mata wants level two before he starts roaming. That's why he stays in this top side. Once he gets it, we can see him leave the bottom lane and start looking for plays, especially if they find amazing. Oh, looks like amazing and Dyrus, Lust Boy, Three's company right now, and they're going to try to find something else. Thinking that that would be the roam for Mata coming around, but they're on the other side of the jungle, so it's just safety and numbers right now. Mirroring each other practically. What a huge gank coming up here. Oh, Bjergsen quite far up. That's the freeze we were talking about with Pawn. Bjergsen forced to go out and farm, and they're able to take first blood from it. And because the members from TSM went to for the wolf camp to clear it, they weren't ready in the mid lane for the ganky. They weren't expecting Samson White to send down all the members. And there was no ward on the top side of the map, even though you know all the members are going to be on yep. the top side. Yeah, if anything, Burks needed to cheat farther towards the bottom side of the map. It's just another question of speed right here. How quickly can Samsung White go and make a play? Before TSM was ready, obviously, in this situation, and it really pays off. Finally, they attack Bjergsen, who was not attacked in that last match and had a pretty good game, and it's gonna be tough now that they've fallen behind in mid lane with Ari versus the Yasuo. And it seems like Team Solomit was setting up for a potential dragon because all their wards was on the bottom side of the map to 
kind of spot. Samsung White moving towards the Dragon. That's why they didn't have any wards on the top side to see this uh, invade here. They're actually hoping the TSM goes for Dragon and Bjergsen walks down that way to A. It's just not paying off. They ended up burning a fair bit of time here and it looks like they're giving up. Also staying around, keep spamming recall. Waiting to see. They want to see one member here from Team Solo mid, and then they can go. It's a big game. They're just going to recall. <laughs> right? No one actually Nobody's going right. Dragon here. Top lane, we talked about how we had these fast pushes in, in the games before. This time around, Imp has actually decided to freeze it because he knows Mata and Bomb can do the roaming for him. He doesn't have to fast push it. He's just going to sit back, get his Blade of the Rune King on this Twitch. And with this much roam, just like in game one, they swapped, and it was still white to come out with the turret. They didn't have any trouble getting back to the regular position and making that happen for themselves. We'll see if TSM can actually take control of that. It's only 700 gold down, but when these teams take a lead, they do not let go. Still roaming as three, sharing the experience quite a bit. They're not falling too far behind, as opposed to the other three on Samsung White that are roaming. Imp free farming here in the top lane on Twitch, so he can make an impact just a little bit later. And Team Solo mid again. Deep wards in the bottom yeah. side of the area. They want to have the option of going Dragon here. While Turtle can kill this bottom lane tower, it's very low, and go straight to Dragon. If they see Mata in top lane, they're going to go for it. This is the point where TSM needs to show conviction against Samsung White. White will dilly-dally around for this early game as long as they have a slight edge because they know that they can win in the mid game and the late game if they get to that point. However, there is no way right now for TSM to actually know where they are. They can surmise it though with deep ward coverage, knowing what's in mid lane, knowing what's in bottom lane, and they need to be willing to pull the trigger on a risk at Dragon. They should be doing it right now. Notice what's happening in top lane. Mata is not showing himself. He's constantly staying away from the minions, so they don't actually know where he is. They just know they haven't seen him for a while. Same goes for the rest of the members. Now they're pinging it. They saw the ward with the minion waves. Samson White shouldn't have placed it when the minions were coming. Yep. They should have waited. They can see their own minions and just right. mirror it, delay it, place the ward. Otherwise, TSM wouldn't have started the Dragon Age. The smallest of mistakes can have some pretty big consequences right there, and White does not play the minion waves correctly here. That's actually a very uncharacteristic mistake. It is. That not the mistakes we saw in the first game, I believe. that's for sure. The mentality possibly weighing on them with that loss. We heard them talking about the possibility of Dandy and Mata kind of getting out of in their own head, I should say, within those plays. Just seven minutes in, things are going pretty regular here. Samsung in the lead as the previous games, but TSM is definitely staving off that pressure much, much more. They've evened up the gold already. Yeah, just because they showed themselves in top side, didn't time the minion waves, placed yep. the ward, they're gonna lose the dragon for it and actually fall behind in this lane swap due to the fact they now gave the dragon to TSM. Yep. It's a muted early game, honestly. After the first blood, where Samsung White may have been able to take a little bit of control of the Dragon and prevent TSM from getting at. However, to do that, Samsung White would have had to play a little bit more greedy than they would if they truly respect their opponent here. And at this time, since they had dropped a game to TSM, they show the respect, they give up the Dragon, and they opt into a turret trade. Saturday down his bottom lane, while Tull didn't, didn't actually manage to get a freeze going. It's a very even lane right now, so right. it's not going to be a big wave building up right for, for Darius. He can still return, get a lot of farm before Lupo is even going to react. So this becomes a dangerous part. Imp now to roam around. Oh! Nice hook coming out of Lust Boy. No follow-up, though, from the other side. We have Bergson back in the mid lane. The teleport will not be used to come out of this one. He was really hoping what they to want. burn a flash right there. Right. But the way Imp played it, he didn't play like he had backup. So this Braum would be a complete surprise. And Turtle is a bunch of trouble right now. That's a pink ward down as well. The slow goes in, he dashes it. So it pretty much just applies and keeps with him. They slow him. Turtle should be going down in this instance. No, the Lantern in. Do they continue? The play happens. Lust Boy says, I'm throwing myself in the fire, but it's actually Wild Turtle that goes down as well in that one. And consistent pursuing of that fight gives Samsung two kills. All credit to Mata and Imp for that play. It is so hard to not give away any tells when you actually have backup. The patience that Imp and Mata showed there is the sole reason they were able to pick up that double kill. Sensational play. Mid lane pushed up quite far. Can Bjergsen and Amazing make anything out of this? Unfortunately, the rest of Samsung White is back, so it's ward clearing for now. Still gonna pay off for them. The pink ward is known. 
by Samsung White there in the Baron Brush. So they'll be able to clear that out ASAP. Mata now beginning his roam. Imp's going to start picking up farm all over the map. Yeah, and he's getting very close to his blade. And in the last game, as soon as he completed, or the last game we saw him play Twitch, as soon as he completed Blade of the Run King, he didn't care about laning anymore. That was all about running around the map now, right. looking for picks left and right. He's going to get it very, very soon because he managed to get the kill and the assist up in his top lane. But and in this game, he's not behind in CS at all because he's yeah. completely avoided Wild Turtle for quite a while. And I feel like it won't actually get to a point where he has to lane against Wild Turtle. The pressure shown to Dyrus in the bottom lane. It does blow the ultimate on that one. And they're going to be coming up with that bot turret. Wild Turtle answering on the other side of the map. And we just see Looper waiting for that one. He's a little too scared to go any farther up here before anything happens. A lot of being called down to the blue buff area right now as TSM is trying to put their foot down and dictate this game a oh, bit. Oh, Imp is going in. Imp's getting what he wants out of this one. He has to wait for the team. Can't get turret right into Bjergsen, and they don't know the Imp's there, but now they do. They are going for Lust Boy once again. He's been making the plays and stopping the fights. Now do Amazing, maybe forced to flash over the wall, and indeed he is, as Samsung White starts to turn up the heat. This is still worth it for TSM, because they got two towers for it. Wild Turtle killed the top tower, and they got the mid tower here. Samsung White took four members, run, ran down to this bottom side to take this tower here to force Team Solomate away from their own jungle. And they just said, okay, we don't care about bottom lane. We can take mid tower. We already swapped our AD carry to top lane as well. Looper is useless in a one-on-one -on -one against Wild Turtle at this point. That was two towers for Team Solomate. Yeah, at this point, the game kind of revolves around TSM finding a fight around the Dragon Pit because as much as they've been able to trade these turrets to keep the gold close, they suffer casualties, and the gold is actually going into some really high-risk targets on Samsung White. The fact that Imp is 2-0 and zero in a composition where he can get ulted by Looper's Kale and the fact that that accelerated his Blade of the Ruin King purchase means some really big things for Samsung White. Yeah, and now we have seen Samsung White before setting up for Dragons over a minute in advance. They're already doing They're it. They're doing it again. When you play Ari, you need to have the wall control around objectives because you need the enemy team to walk into you blind, face check you, get a charm in your face, and get one shot. That's how you play Ari as a team. But because Samson White has already been down there placing a few wards, now we see Team Solomon reacting to it, moving in. You have your pink wards, get the control, force Samson White to either give up the dragon or face check your Ari. Play to the Rune King. Slowly onto Bjergsen, gets it out, locks down the damage, but they are trying to give that protection right now to Imp. Where's the intervention gonna come out? It already has happened, and that's gonna be Imp going down. Mata falls as well. The duos of both teams have fallen, so the power to come out of the mid lane all the way over the rest of strike. Junglers walk away bleeding, and it looks like they stave off. A double kill coming in for Pawn. They'll find the main. Oh, oh, one of the kills comes in. He is able to get it. A retribution for him, and it is a three for two overall. No, I think it was a three for three. TSM picked up three kills You're there. Right. The first You're right. kill was very early on. However, once again, look at where the kills went. Three of them to Pawn's Yasuo. That is disastrous. Yeah. An even distribution amongst TSM, but not on the champion. They really need to get ahead, which is Wild Turtles. Yasuo, and they also didn't get too much He's dragon dead. control, but let's check this out. Yeah, so again, Imp, he loves to be the guy to start the fights because he knows he has the Kale OT to help him. Mata is there as well, so the Kale blocks a lot of the damage. Yeah. But notice how Bjergsen is actually not using his ulti's charges here. He's waiting. Ulti's yeah. gone. Now he jumps in, gets to the back line, gets a few kills. But Samson right at this point are still stronger and can keep playing it. At the start of that fight, Bjergsen landed a really early charm, which forced the early intervention, which is the sole reason that TSM was able to make something happen here because Samsung White actually kind of beat TSM to the punch there. Going out of that fight three for three was a little bit of a miracle, but now it's still about that dragon control and whether or not Samsung White can get it. They send Imp top lane of all things and TSM wasn't expecting that, but they have a huge number advantage in the yeah. lane here. Samsung White ran down to dragon, didn't have any wards to place other than just a trinket ward, I believe it was, no sorry, a green ward, and that was it. They didn't even clear the pink wards. Lupo actually ran past the pink ward, didn't even clear it beforehand. And then Team Solomon see them being on the bottom side, rush straight for, for mid lane here. So they're really playing the turret game and they're using this mid game comp to fast push these towers with Lucian once again. However, even with all the fast push, they're still in a gold hole and fighting in the dragon area against a farm Twitch and Yasuo 
is one of the most dangerous things imaginable for TSM. They are proceeding with so much caution. However, they have to be willing to take risks because if they give this dragon to Samsung White, they are almost admitting defeat. They've already done their push mid strategy to stop this, and White claps on the dragon in perfect time. TSM waltzing in a little late to the party on this one. An easy smite in for Dandy. No steals coming in. A good yeah. spread of damage coming in from Amazing. They, the oh! they do get pawn. Will they be able to lock him down? Intervention comes out nicely from Looper. Is it enough, though? Wild Turtle takes down Mata. That's a double kill coming in for Imp. They start to clean up this fight, but now they're all spread out in the wrong positions. Another him. answer coming in from Bjergsen, but they have lost four members, and he's trying to run by himself. Great Tempest. The cripple actually doesn't lock down. Bjergsen's just out of range. Woo, still trying to fight. Wow. And it cost him his life. Wow. Penta kill for Imp. Holy cow, that was an insane team fight by Samson White. That is Imp's second Penta kill of the World Championship. Hasn't happened before. And honestly, considering how close this game was looking before that, what a moment to have it. We said it was one of the most dangerous things TSM could do fighting this fight. With the wind wall down and the intervention on the pawn, they thought, great, they have it. However, they pile in, and that is exactly what Imp is waiting for. You deal with one threat, you enable another. Imp gets a beautiful spray and prey, basically kills two people immediately, and then the baiting from the rest of Samsung White was just exquisite right here. They set everything up. Yeah, and let's just enjoy Dandy here. He goes in, he's gonna connect the first Q onto Bjergsen, and then he flashes the charm, and then he jumps back in as soon as the charm is gone. Team Solomon almost yeah. got baited by the charm here onto the Titan. Like, oh, we well, got the perfect almost target. Got baited. They got baited. <laughs> perfect target. Intervention came in from Looper. And this again, where it becomes really hard to play like Ari, when you're not the one in control and it, you're not the one where the team is face taking you, suddenly the fights become really, really hard. Even in a hectic fight, Samsung White finds a way to okie doke around and still allow Imp the pentakill with the chances for many people to pick it up. Great communication and synergy coming out from White in these fights. Yeah, and that may be the fight that clinches Samsung White's spot in the True. semifinals. They had to slip up in game three. This fourth game was definitely the second best game the TSM has played in the series, but it doesn't look like it is enough at the moment. Seven kills on Imp and four on the pawn with the Twitch Yasuo. Just Kale is icing on the cake as well in this composition with two fed squishy people with a bunch of damage. Not even being able to turn a burn on him is just that Exactly, and it was the last pick. It came in against the Ari pick from Bjergsen saying, we know you can 100% to zero a target. You have DFG first item as well. Yep. We have Kale ulti now to stop you from doing that, and then we can win the fight instead. So that was just such a crucial last pick coming in from Looper, also because they needed some magic damage. I mean, everything else is full physical. So on TSM's mind, how to stop the pressure right now of Samsung White. They're destroying all the vision that they need to. And we have Dyrus in the bot lane now getting 1v1 out. We thought it might be Samsung White to be mentally charred on this one, but it seems like Team Solo Mid has kind of fallen to the wayside. Yeah, and this is also, again, Mundo, if he has to build armor early on, it's just not as effective. His ult, he doesn't get the buff from the Spirit Vistage right. either. He cannot sustain fast enough when there's constant damage coming in from a Yasuo, constantly hitting him. Blade of Ruin King was already picked up for the split push as well. Yep. And he's 505 against the CO3. I mean, that kind of yeah. counts too. They have no answer for Pawn. If they send two people, they will get initiated on by Lee Sin and Braum. TSM is stuck without many options right here, and they need to hope that White gets arrogant again and overcommits. But they're so far ahead right now, it's a pretty good chance. Pretty nice charm, though. It's gonna be on to Bjergsen. Does not oh, take the resonating him. strike. He doesn't have to. Imp takes him down first, but it does put him in a position to be a menace here on the backside of the fight. Nice calling to come out. The heal. Summoner used by Imp. Oh! He gets locked down under the turret. A triple or double kill rather coming in here for Amazing. Intervention turns this one around. He wants those pawns, but he does not get them as Wild Turtles able to seal the deal on that kill. Pawns forced to run out. Hey, a little bit of overaggression there by Samsung White. Still getting some kills onto the right targets, but yeah, they overstayed their welcome right there. TSM kept the game a little bit close. And second time Amazing actually managed to jump in and get a kill when the fight is almost over. Looper had ulti, didn't use it in time. This right here is why Samson White loves this twitch Braum oh, combo. Oh, nice because once you have the passive on, twitch long range with Ratatata, you can just lock down these targets and kill them so easily. Dyrus was able to take a lot of time under the turret for Samson White there, which was eventually led to the collapse from TSM. If White wouldn't have dove quite as hard or 
completely committed to that Dyrus kill, they would not have been caught out. But honestly, with that lead, that's the type of aggression yeah. and killer instinct that White needs to be playing with. And yeah. they honestly are playing with. But also, the kind of uh, aggression we have seen other teams punish Samson White for, and TSM in the last game did the same. Mm -hmm. This game, when you have an hour pick, you always have this all-in potential. As long as Kale isn't there with the ulti, you can turn fights around. And that's almost one of the main reasons we see Blue able to topple White, exactly. punishing Every all their time. mistakes. Every single time. They will punish Samson White for making an over-aggressive move, for making a tower dive, a Baron call, and then they simply outperform them, outperform them in the late game. Well, no matter what, these games seem to always happen quick. We're only 20 minutes in. The teams are about to again approach each other's base. TSM has a way right up the mid lane to an inhibitor turret. But right now, Samsung White seems to be the driver. They White is just using TSM. their map control right here. They're hoping Run for another ride. fight in the Pentakill choke point. Yeah. The Imp had already gotten a Pentakill out of. <laughs> if TSM goes in to this Dragon Pit again, it would be to their demise. TSM needs to position elsewhere. They either need to go up mid lane, yeah. they need to faint Baron, or they need to get some type of turn push. If they try and contest this Dragon, it's not going to end well. It's too risky when you don't have the wall control around the objective. You cannot really go in there with the RPG. We keep talking about it. Wow, that's a lot of damage. A lot of yeah. damage, a lot of stick potential as well. Flash coming in. Actually, the stick potential comes out because Pawn can hit the Qs over and over again, keeping himself in range, knowing his abilities. They try to go for Imp here. Imp's forced to flash. Not going to make it out of this one alive. The rack goes down. Pawn now to get his second kill of this engagement that he started himself. That's going to be kill secured by Dandy and Samsung White are ready for Dragon. Great play by Pawn. Some really porous positioning by Imp. He did not need to go down there, and he falls his third time in this game. Kind of the nature of playing Twitch, though. You start to have this hero mentality, and you need to have it sometimes to find the right fight initiation. But even so, it was two more kills for White, and they take the Dragon. So, no real loss at the end of the day. Definitely getting a little ahead of himself. Looper can't really throw the Kao Mary that far. You have to be in range of intervention. It like goes down easy. That was good. <laughs> 39,000 to 33 right now. Almost even in turrets, and TSM has been able to really keep themselves in oh, with this no. one. Find another fight over at this red. It just seems to be the battle arena right now. Charmed up to Mata, but he's unbreakable on everything right now. So he's mitigating a lot of damage. We didn't really mention it. Look at all the block that they have on this team. White goes in again. Glacial Fisher goes out. They actually split that one right up the middle. And TSM gets themselves all on one side. Great grouping and positioning in the fight. Wild Turtle to match that as well. And they just don't have enough time to put it back at Samsung White. There was no Yasuo ult here for the re-engage where Dandy actually went in and kicked. But he was Bjergsen. But they couldn't actually get any kills, but everyone yeah. disengaged, and now Samson White, they can just return to the split push. Nobody can stop a Yasuo at this point in the game. Yeah. If you look at what TSM has. It's true, and this is actually probably the first time in four games that I will legitimately think that Samsung White has a better team composition than TSM. Yeah. We saw the best example of it in that last fight. Uh, first off, when Bjergsen managed to land a charm through the wind wall and through the Braum shield, it gets intervention. The other times, this gets blocked by those shields. It's just so hard for Bjergsen to make anything happen. Dyrus is one of his main ways of initiation, also with projectiles. There's just not very much that TSM can maneuver around to make plays. Yeah, and also when you're AD carry, pretty much everything is going to be blocked. Your ulti, completely gone. So even Wild Turtle can't really join these fights properly. And it was all about this lane swap early in the game. It was all about the lane swap. We saw Samson White play a lot of D boards level one, get the lane swap, get level two on Mata, and then he started roaming down mid lane. First kill on Bjergsen, delayed the dragon for a long time, bought time to farm up, get the blade as well, and then suddenly the kills just started racking up the Samson White. Double blade at, as well. And that definitely means they're going to be warding up that Baron. We already see three to four wards, two of them being pinks coming in from Samsung White there. Only one from TSM, so if they get any time alone with Baron, it's going to be going down quite fast. Right now, TSM is a little paranoid about the mid turret here. Feels like it'll open up too much, and kind of just floundering about here in the mid lane. This is almost what gave Samsung White a little bit of pressure back in game three, so they have to keep their foot pedal to the metal. And we did just see him before, being caught out of position, dying. We have seen it in the past as well from him. If he gets too far away from this KO pick, he can die instantly, right? And that could be the way for TSM, uh, TSM to get back yeah. in the game. He would need to make a pretty big mistake. And I imagine he is in a much more serious mode right now. But at the same time, he's got to yeah. take risks. And TSM has got to continue to force plays. However, White 
looks to be ahead in this race. I wonder if GSM is willing to trade, though, because honestly... This is smart. Get it's actually good there. for them. They're ahead yeah. of White on this, this trade. This is the best you can get. This is a Why such is a good White move. not recalling right now? They will lose this inhibitor race. That's going to be an inhibitor. Team Solomon can pick it up here. That is such a good play. Yeah. I mean, we got the base race cam up right now. White clearly going back. They know they can't push further. What a rotation there by TSM. Still have a few minions in the base as well. They're going to be not having wards on the recalls right now. We actually have a run few running back as well, which are going to stop that. So TSM may not have free time to get out. The buck doesn't stop here. They know TSM has to retreat. Where will TSM oh, go? Go, oh, Baron. They go back? White Baron, Baron is the play. Baron is the play. They also have it warded on Team Solo mid side still. They've snuck one in, but the pink ward placed inside pit will see it. This is where those Blade of the Rune Kings come out big, but that's not Imp in that as well. So this is just a clear job on the wards. Imp is on his way here. He recalled. Yeah. They're going to collapse onto them. Oh, they have the their rope. Cure from Dandy. Ah. Not the target they want. Wild Turtle will be able to dash away. That was the riskiest ward Wild Turtle could have placed at that moment because they did not have vision inside the barricade. Yeah. But White is now in position. What happened at Dragon for the Pentakill can absolutely happen at Baron right now. Gentlemen, ward battles end very bloody every time, and I think that's what we're about to get here. They are both checking out this Baron. It is pretty, not even that really low, like 75% HP. They stop it. Stop it. I mean, keep Beautiful mind. pressure. There's a downed inhibitor in the mid lane and that it's has to put. be defended by Samsung White. They cannot bait around this Baron. That option is gone while that inhibitor is dead. Yeah, and that was a great play overall by Team Solar Mate. You get inhibitor, the Samsung White will push in the top side, and then they have to run down towards the bottom side of the map, otherwise it would be flanked. Instantly as they move bottom side and they see Samsung White are gone from the mid lane, they know they're going Baron and they react. Run there, stop the Baron, didn't try and do anything else, didn't like stay around on bottom side, so they stopped the Baron and get inhibitor. That was very, very nice play. Couldn't have made a better call being that far down in gold and being able to take your opponent's inhibitor right out from under their noses. Beautiful play by Team Solo Mid, really keeping themselves alive in this game. The pressure in the mid lane will kind of stave off all that pressure that White's created on TSM's side of the map. Now we see TSM saying it's going to be about the Baron. We're going to have the vision necessary yeah. for it, and they are staying as a full five right now. I really have to wonder how TSM can try and capitalize off this because they are still so much worse in a 5v5. That's true. And they can't really posture too aggressively around objectives. Maybe even in a 4v5, they have to be a little bit careful. They should definitely try and get Dragon of all things while this is happening, because it's a safer, quicker objective. But that's where White's going. These are the positions right here we've heard Bjergsen say before. If we continue to get these catches, it's going to be our game. This positioning by White is spectacular. They have the split push going down in the bot lane, and they're stopping the super minion pressure by being in the mid lane. GSM basically has to all in right now, which puts them at mercy to the teleport of Looper. Yeah, Dyrus should have been down this bottom lane with his own teleport Absolutely. defending. He's recalling now. But I do like the call still from Team Solo Mid. Set up around the Baron here. Have them walk into you. You have the Ari pick. Lucia might even be able to get some burst damage off. That's what they were aiming for. Sadly, the bottom lane was pushing. Dyrus should have been there defending. Once again, though, they're just out rotating Samson White at the moment. Another free tower. Yeah. These are some OG and TSM rotations. They're doing so well right now. Getting every turret down. Six turrets despite being down so heavily in gold. And Looper wanted red so bad, he lost a lot of time on that turret. Does not grab the inhibitor, and you hear the crowd behind Team Solo Look at mid lane. Now. Look at yeah. them, they're going back they to the top lane here. just go back to that. They have all the wards in the jungle. White they can see getting... everything. This is two around the map right two now. In... What is going on for White, White? What are you doing? I don't think they even know. They, we said tilting was a possibility, and all the wrong calls are being made right now, and they it's usually Mata they on that voice. I mean, they're trying to flank. They're not very together right now, but a lot can happen. They have a big team fight edge if they can actually get this fight, but they are losing structures left and right. They have zero defensive wards before right now, where they just placed like five in their own jungle. They didn't respect the fact the TSM had put so many wards in their jungle, so when they were standing in mid lane, trying to defend the super minions and buy time for Looper, Team Solomek could just say, we can see everything in your jungle. We have the minion pushing already in top lane. Go straight there. One of TSM's biggest struggles during the regular season, especially when they had Bjergsen in place in Reginald, going all the way back, was shot calling, especially yep. in the mid and late game. How to come together as a team. What a moment to have better map movements than Samsung White. When they're down in gold, Better down work. in the series, on the brink of elimination, down in wards, but still able to squeeze an inhibitor and another inhibitor turret out of it. Obviously, they're still at a monumental disadvantage. 6,000 gold, no ability to control objectives, but they've definitely gotten a few bricks out of Samsung White's base. 
been ridiculous play. You gotta consider how much is on Bjergsen's play coming in to fill Reggie's shoes, then to shot call as well in a position he wasn't a shot caller in. And he has been coming out on top for the team. Amazing with a lot of the early game calls, and they have made some early game decisions that have changed their fate completely. Let's see. Once again, they go into this Baron here. They keep the wall control up. So Samson White is forced to face check onto them or stay around his mid lane and push out the minions before they do anything. They did be careful not to get baited here. Every yeah. time they land a charm, they know how that story ends. I don't think TSM actually wants to fight here. They're hoping that Samson White commits towards a Baron so they can go retake that inhibitor. That's probably TSM's only win condition here. So if they can play some guerrilla warfare, maybe catch a charm when the shields aren't up and continue to tick away at inhibitors. Exactly. Keep pushing in the mid lane here. If Luba is... Oh! Impus engage! He throws down the Ghost Blade. Are they in range? That's going to be Pawn trying to be the front runner on this one. Great flashes and disengage coming out of Team Solo mid. There will be no rebuttal on this, but Samsung White right. is bearing down on the Baron. And that's the question. There will be no rebuttal. The amount of damage that Imp was able to shred down on a GSM hopefully makes White able to take this Baron without repercussions. They're killing it fast. Great scrying orb right there. Let's see what happens. That wind wall They're really stopping it. anything Easy. they wanted on that. Amazing, too far behind even for the initiation. Samsung White doesn't have the waves to keep this push going, so TSM and the team are going TSM to start firing into the bottom. They can go bottom lane. Lost by one to stop the recall. That was a beautiful job playing the recall back game. Look at bottom they lane. do get a few stops. Can they get there in time? It is going to be Wild Turtle and Bjergsen. He's very low, so they're going to be afraid. Do they want to catch him on the crossover, or are they going to use this gigantic wave in the bot lane? They say Turtle go, but no, Turtle yeah. stay. To commit for the inhibitor turret would have been too much so they are content with just a chart. However, the big winner of that was obviously Samsung White. Yeah. They got the Baron only for an outside turret, which since they were already down two inhibitor turrets, they don't care about. And the gold lead extends for them here. Setting up a trap though. Let's see who they can catch. Bit of fanatic, Nobody. fanatic brush set up by Team Solo mid here. They may see, oh, Bjergsen gets antsy in the pants. He steps out, so Looper knows he is going to be there with the rest of the team. They back, they're going to reset, but now they have to realize these fights just got 10 times harder with Samsung White and yeah. that Baron buff. And again, we see how strong Samsung White as a team with this combo in this game. Once they get to five versus five, Im can pop out. He has this magic seven seconds where you have your ulti, you have your ghost plate, and the attack speed from your Q when you pop out of stealth is insane. If you can't punish him there, he will destroy your team like we just saw before. Still not many would have predicted we'd be in game four with Samsung White having two downed inhibitor turrets to TSM. With all that being said, White is in position to contain TSM now. TSM got away from him a little bit with some deep ward control and finding the hole in Samsung White's yeah. vision. That's been patched yeah. up though and White has Baron buff with five. Well, Team Solomate, they've had the better shot calling in this game. They've been able to basically just get objectives and turrets all the time, avoiding the fights against Samson White, knowing they would lose them, and still, you get mid inhibitor, top one is open as well. Him thinking capes are cool, so he picks up two cloaks for himself. Wants a bit more crit on that damage. Huh. Yeah, that may Sting. not be the best buys. Especially because you don't have your Infinity Edge yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously he wants to have one, and I wonder if the last one is going to go into the likes of a Phantom Dancer no. for him. I mean, obviously you can build both of those things into big items, right? but no. He, yeah, yeah, just no. You build the BF Sword, not your critical folks. I feel like that was just uh, some type of mistake there by him. Maybe relying the, there's on the a chance the team. he now has a higher percentage crit and he wants to get a lucky crit at the start of a fight with Spray and Prey to try and, and switch yep. the game. I just don't think it's optimal. Anyway, that's not the story here. It's White trying to dive in because they have contained TSM. This is going to be the turret going down. Now to the bot lane. They're going to be able to pretty much cover this, clear out all the wards that they need so they know they're not getting flanked. Dyrus does have time to play around in his top. Good grab there. Whoa, he's going to go down here. Hits it up. That's the ignite. That's the burn. Mata 
Dakota goes down. Do they follow? No, they lose Amazing in the Retribution kill there, but it seems like White is, is all right with that. They can keep fighting because they didn't use the ulti from Looper here. He actually saved it. Didn't want to use it on Master so they can keep going with the four members. Hey, there's those double critical cloaks. He got a few crits in that one. Trading a jungler for the support there just enables the dive of Samsung White. They get the inhibitor back safely. And we also see Samsung White showing, even though you don't have a siege comp, how you can brute force oh, out. Man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, where's the crits? Very interesting. Imp takes a nice orb deception from Bjergsen. Pawn going under double Nexus turrets. Takes the intervention out there. That may give TSM the edge here. They want to cancel somebody out, but Looper doesn't have to worry. Already a Guardian Angel on him as well. I mean, you can really see the freedom that Samsung White has in the team fights. Even when Imp opens up like that, they have so much to prevent the counter engage. Wind walls fly up, intervention flies in. Braum wasn't even there for his disengage or his shield. It's a wonder the TSM made it this far. Yeah, but it just, it is also so hard for them to defend towers because we can take it after here. So Mata, Luba is standing right there. Yeah. He's basically think, saying, I have ulti, but not for you. I think so right he there, before Amazing jumped over the wall, was where TSM should have said, okay, we repelled the push. Because yeah. White would got to go enough. 4v5, but as soon as he's willing to jump in to trade kills, he was hoping for a quick in and out, right? Simple, but yeah. Obviously, the summoner heal was a bit too much, and it ends up being a really bad trade for TSM. And we did get to see like the all-in potential you do have when you have like DFG, Ari, and you land the charm, even on a fairly tank member, even though there's not a lot of magic resist for Mata. But then also just the way you use Yasuo Windwall in a comp like this to take down towers. You basically walk up to the tower, put it right behind it, by, behind the tower, so TSM can engage on you, they can poke you, and you just brute force down this tower instantly. 10,000 gold lead put into continuous fight. Two Guardian Angels now, one for Dandy, one for Looper, and even the safety of intervention to come in. The focus just became so much harder for Team Solo Mid in these fights. They even pick out one person, and Imp's not going to be on the front line. And if he is, he does have the intervention. TSM now doing a little bit of wave maintenance. They're going to be able to clear that one out, but they're about to find Samsung coming down from the top side if Looper, well, as Looper gets this pushed up. Minute 20 on Baron. That might just be theirs again with the pressure they have. And it's a pretty big moment for Samsung White here to be able to close out TSM and make it into the semifinals of the 2014 World yep. Championship. Because remember, last year they lost out in group stages. Right here, they made the exact same mistake that they made last year, where they got a little bit overconfident and ended up falling. They should be feel lucky that they can come out of this series after having done that again. They should never make that mistake again as far as this World Championship is concerned. And if they can win this, that mistake effectively doesn't matter because they will be in the semifinals. Wild Turtle giving the turret some breathing room now with the calling. Just a missed hook from Lust Boy as the last minion gives his life for that safety of the team of Samsung White. 40 seconds on to Baron. We'll probably see Samsung milling about a little bit as they place their wards but they're ready to take a fight if they want, getting TSM out of their base and into that brawl. They do need the mid lane and bottom lane to push in first, to kind of spread out Team Solo Mate here. Diving straight up five versus five can still be risky, even though there's a big goal lead for Samson White. You can also just see them set up a lot of wards around Baron and just bait it out, hope Team Solo Mate moves out of the base, kill them, win the game. Yeah, and honestly, TSM shouldn't even think about Baron. They need to guess when White is going to be going for Baron and rush up the mid lane, hope to get one or two inhibitors. But even that is incredibly risky because, as you can see, they don't have vision of the Baron whatsoever. I don't even know if they have an exact timer. Because uh, probably. I think the scrying are very close, off, I'm yeah. not sure. Well, they have like somewhat timer, but it doesn't even matter for them. What are you doing towards this bottom lane? I, I think they're hoping. So, oh, they're waiting. Yes, they want Sam they're White waiting to for White to recall, yeah. move to the middle of the map, and then, and then run sneak in. in behind. They've actually been able to get here without being spotted. They sweep out. It's obviously a dangerous play. They need to be careful not to give away their cards here. This but, is actually a really smart but move. If Imp is running in the back, they might be able to kill him before they can even react in time. They're looking for it here. There's no ward in the mid lane, however. Only the menu. Which they did. All the wards that Sam White they has dare. on TSM side oh, says it's probably not a good idea to end the long They're going to try and finish it. They're going to try and finish it. Amazing is way too far ahead of the team right there. They could have pulled this off so much cleaner. Not a lot of communication to come in there. Maybe it's team a bait. Solo Maybe mid. they're hoping to catch them in the retreat. They could possibly get a huge bait in on this one. We see Mata actually peeling off to the side to where they don't have too much vision. And they do realize, actually, yeah. Amazing is going to lead them right back to the team. No connection there on the Sonic Wave. Windwall blasts out a bit of the damage. They try to go oh, instant, instantaneous.
Obviously, they dropped out Bjergsen. TSM does not get the fight they want. They're thrown right into the dirt on this one. A double kill for Pawn. Now they're chasing out Amazing. He throws down the Randuins, but it's only going to keep him alive for so long. A lot of pings are going to the bottom lane. Multitasking coming in from yeah. White, and they are going to start taking the pace of Team Solomon. The idea was so good by TSM. The execution was just failing, and again, White absolutely sees the window and completely passes on it. This could be the game. Caleb Lee Sin, kill turrets pretty fast. Dyrus doing what he can. He's here, he's a big guy. He's trying to sell the business over to Looper and Dandy, but they don't even care that he's there. One Nexus turret goes down in one of our longest game of the series. Now Dyrus being forced out. 23 to 10 on the scoreboard. The minion wave there to help take this one down. Wild Turtle still fighting valiantly across the map as he gets closed in by three members of White. They are gonna actually take the whole base on this one and play it safe. Let's see, we're not done yet, man. Dan, yeah. he wants to keep fighting here. Well, they have some pretty long death timers. It's I think they're just waiting members. for the backup. Securing the second inhibitor. Look at that Nexus turret. This should be serious. Amazing. Gets the next Yasuo ult, and he gets the final Q from Pawn. That's four members down. Bjergsen doing what he can to stay alive, but it's not going to be enough. White will take down Team Solomon in the quarterfinals. But we have to say, you can see Mata was not very enthused to take four games in 40 minutes in the fourth game to take They had to work for it. They definitely had to work for it in this game. We have some very, very smart rotations by Team Solomon, getting a lot of towers, getting inhibitor. They can actually be happy, even though they lost this game. Obviously, you're not happy because you lost the series, but this game alone was very, very well played by Team Solomon as well. It was, and unfortunately for them, it is the end of the road. Their world championship journey is now over, but they can take a lot into next season. They defeated a Korean team for the first time in their team's history, and they dealt with the favorites to win the tournament. An yeah. unhappy victory. It, it very well may be that they stand to be the only team that will take a game off of Samsung White after they turned it back on, put the picks back in their favor on comfort picks. They were back to the White we saw in the first two games. Yeah, nice bow in front of the home crowd. Thinking about the way White played, they definitely showed a few minor vulnerabilities, not necessarily in their gameplay, right. but in their mindset. The mental game, game may be where they are potentially attackable in the future, and that's that's one of the hardest things to attack in League of Legends, because you never really know how to get inside the head of an opponent. But with that being said, they're our first team in the semifinals. Absolutely ridiculous matchups here. Already in the quarterfinals, a lot said this would be a sweep. TSM was coming in as the underdog in many people's minds. I think everybody's mind able to take that game off of White. Gave them a lot of momentum to go into the next game adapting, figuring it out. Our longest game of the series, so it showed that they were adapting, but just not fast enough. We could really see the difference between Team Solo made in game one and two, where they right. were nervous. Again, we had Reginald talk about it, Lokodoko was talking about yeah. how there were some nerves. They kind of had to get going, and once they did, they actually started to perform really well. If they could perform like this from game one, we would have a lot closer right. series. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much the story. TSM started so slow yeah. against White, and to White's credit, they came out of the gate running. They never really let TSM catch their breath until they actually did. Obviously, that's when we saw the one game. I'm, I'm honestly happy that TSM was able to win a game there. Right? Yeah. It definitely, it, it's gonna be good take this with a grain of salt, it's going to be good for both teams here. TSM, right. because they can take that confidence into the next season, and White,